Hello everybody and welcome back to RG2L Season 7, Week 5. We're back into Game 2 between Aeon LMAO and Walrus Salt Slingers. We actually saw Aeon LMAO uh, take that Game 1 after a pretty rough laning phase up against Walrus Salt Slingers. They absolutely dominated all three lanes in the early game. And uh, unfortunately they couldn't convert it. So we'll see if Aeon LMAO is going to look to uh, close this out into two games. Or if we're going to have a Game 3 for uh, one of the more intense, I would say, uh, matches we've got so far in the playoffs here. As going to be a Storm Spirit and a Tuscar, both getting banned out in the first phase. Both pretty strong arrows. Uh, not too odd to see those guys get taken out, especially the Tuscar lately. He's been getting taken out of in-houses, professional play, uh, even pub matches. A lot of people don't like dealing with him, so he'll be taken out here. Storm Spirit, not the greatest. Uh, he's definitely fallen off a little bit since DAC uh, when he was, you know, really strong back uh, when Sumail really showed everybody how good he was. Leshrac going to be taken out as well. And the Quap is going to be right after that. So both Tier 1 mids going to be taken out here. We've still got about a Shadow Fiend, a Alina, Earthshaker, Lion all left in the pool. And Undying is going to be picked up first. So a nice little early Undying pick. And it's going to be an instant Windrunner. And alongside that is going to be what here? A Windrunner first is going to be pretty good against the Tombstone. Focus Fire later on. Can just take that down very quickly here. As well as the Windrun going to prevent the zombies from stacking on you and right-clicking you down there. So... Could be pretty nice to get rid of that tombstone early on. It is going to be Aeon Jib drafting up against uh, Paschetti here. Both uh, players did draft last game as well, so nothing changed too much. And it's going to be a gyrocopter, so nice little pick up there as well. Going to be good at dealing with the tombstone zombies, the flak cannon. Going to be able to hit all of those, which is super helpful in any team fight. Clearing out the zombies and, and taking out that tombstone. As that's uh, certainly Undying's strongest ability. Uh, definitely the the biggest reason that people pick him. We'll see kind of where this Undying is going to be lane so far. Uh, could be an off lane. Most likely will be a support. He's been played as a, usually around a four position more often than I think he's been played as an off lane. And it's going to be a Witch Doctor follow up. So pretty nice follow up there. They do have the Shackle as well as the Homing Missile. Uh, homing Missile actually pretty good against Witch Doctor. Oddly enough, you can just lay it on him even just one point, put it on him during the fight, and he's got to tank it right away, or else he's Perhaps going to have to channel Death Ward for a really short period of time or kind of has to run away from it and get in an unfavorable position. And we're going to see an Earthshaker Lena both banned out here. Uh, both fantastic heroes at Earthshaker with that ridiculously long initiation range. Lena, just good all around. Could be a support, could be a mid lane. Uh, just fantastic if she gets that Aghanim Scepter, that 950 pure damage. is just so difficult to deal with here. And the Ancient Apparition, oddly enough, is going to be the next ban here. And uh, so is the Bloodseeker. So the Bloodseeker making sense. AA, not so much. They do have a lot of heal between the Undying and the Witch Doctor. And perhaps they're a little bit afraid that they'll try to counter it with the AA. But instead, while we're Salt Singers, they're going to be picking up the Dazzle here. And that's going to give them some nice heal of their own. The uh, bonus armor from Weave is going to be great against that Tombstone. As well as against the Witch Doctor, who's going to have that physical damage coming out of the Death Ward channel here. He uh, also has some... Uh, Pretty good abilities to help keep his team alive there. The Shallow Grave going to help any uh, dives that the Undying is going to go for here. And, uh, you know, it, the, the heal's not the worst. It's pretty good. Pretty good burst heal, especially if, if you're close up with a, a melee hero like the Undying. Going to be taking some damage. And it's going to be a Viper. So, uh, okay. Could we be seeing um, a mid Viper here? It looks like it could be a Windrunner mid up against the Viper. I think the, the Viper would get pretty wrecked by the Windrunner. She's got pretty solid base damage, ridiculously good range, uh, so she can really harass out the Viper. You know, even though he's got the corrosive skin, the, the power shot won't be dealing as much. Um, but even just the right clicks are, are very annoying for a Viper to deal with. And we'll see how Walrus Salt Singers want to uh, reply to this. The Shadow Fiend's still in the pool. They're actually going to pick up the Lion, oddly enough, but not that awful up against the Viper. Of course, he's got some bonus magic resistance here, but certainly not a deal breaker. You've got a nice Hex. You've got a good stun with the lion and it's going to be pretty tough for this witch doctor to get a nice death ward down here with uh, already three pretty solid stuns and it's going to be a pugna follow-up so he's going to be asking for that lion to finger uh as long as he puts down that that uh nether ward there going to prevent him from you know taking the the easiest finger out there and doesn't want to burst himself down here pugna going to give them a lot of push and it's going to be a very aggressive lineup so far from aon lmao well while we're salt slingers they they can certainly handle the aggression um, but they definitely skill into the late game far better than Aeon LMAO. So they're going to be looking to probably ban out a hero that's good early on. And then potentially pick up a hero that's uh, a little bit better at fighting early on. So we'll have to see what they want to go for. It looks like it'll most likely be a, a mid lane windrunner. And uh, 
It'll be a safe lane gyro alongside the Dazzle and the Lion, and that'll just leave them an off lane hero. Potentially could see something. Uh, Clockwork wouldn't be the greatest here. Uh, Centaur War Runner would actually be a pretty good pickup. Um, Timbersaw wouldn't be that great whatsoever. I don't think you want to run anything like a Faceless Void off lane. That's a little bit, a uh, little bit out of date. It's still a pretty good option. Um, I think, especially if you've got the Weave here and the Gyrocopters outside with the Flak Cannon and the Call Down inside the Chrono. Could be some nice Wombo combo, but uh, he'll certainly have a tough time up against the Viper later on in, this, in the game, and the Kiting is very annoying. You never really want to buy a BKB as a Void. I'm really dipping into to this uh, reserve time here to get this last ban out. They want to make sure they're going to grab something that uh, Aeon Alameo really wants here. I think if you're Aeon, you want the Centaur more than anything. As a, he'll give you some nice blink initiation later on. He's got the ultimate to uh, initiate early on. He's pretty tanky. Going to be hard to harass out of lane. And uh, he's good at fighting early with the double edge with the stomp. If you can land both those abilities on one or two heroes. It's pretty annoying. And they're actually going to get rid of the Shadow Fiend. So they're not expecting a mid Viper. So maybe they know something I don't. Maybe they know that they like to run a safe lane Viper here. And it's going to be a mid Pugna. We'll have to see though. A mid Pugna wouldn't be too bad against the Windrunner. Uh, definitely uh, push the tower as quickly as possible there. Get an early bottle and just uh, try to uh, win the lane with a, a little bit of a Decrepify and a, a Nether Blast. And hopefully the Windrunner can't really stand up against that. But nevertheless, they are going to ban the Shadow Fiend. So not even then, not even expecting the Pugna or the Viper to go mid. They're still expecting a mid here to be picked up from Ana Lameo. And they're going to be dipping into their last ban. They know they've got to get rid of an offlaner. It could be a Windrunner offlane here, but uh, I think that'd be pretty weak. And they are going to ban the Darkseer. So a little bit afraid of that. Wombo the Vac into Caldown, Flat Cannon into an Impale is pretty strong. And they're actually going to pick up a Phoenix here. So the Phoenix could be uh, pretty tough to deal with that egg. They don't have uh, very much in terms of physical damage, really. Um, they're basing a lot of their damage here off the Undying, the, the Death Ward, the Viper Strike, as well as the Nether Blast, which really doesn't do much up against the Phoenix here. So it could be somewhat annoying for them to have to deal with that supernova. Uh, unless they pick up uh, an, uh, their last core here as uh, somebody who can do with that a little bit better. Perhaps a troll warlord, safe lane, viper off lane, maybe even run some dual lanes here. Get like a viper undying off lane, troll warlord, witch doctor, safe lane, run the pugna mid, viper undying dual lane. Would be, uh, it's, it's a pretty pub stomp lane, but it could be pretty strong as well if, if you play it properly and you're a little bit careful about how you extend and... Things like that, so if they do pick up something like a Troll Warlord, perhaps something like a Luna to help with that Supernova, um, Drow I, I don't think would be the greatest option in this game. Although they don't really have much to get in behind towards the Drow Ranger, they've just got a bunch of ranged heroes here. And uh, they, they do have three ranged heroes on the side of Aeon LMAO, the Viper, the Witch Doctor, and the Pugna could be doing uh, quite a bit of damage right click wise if they do have that Drow Aura, so a Drow would be a nice pickup here. As well, if they want to go for it. And really dipping into that time. 30 seconds left before they've got to make their final decision here. Let's see what he's going for. Silencer. And it's going to be a silencer. Okay, so... Definitely did not expect the silencer too much here. It looks like... Um, Probably going to be a mid lane silencer here. or No, probably going to be a safe lane Pugna, but this means it has to be dual lanes. There's absolutely no way that this is an off lane Viper or an off lane silencer. I imagine it'll be uh, a silencer Witch Doctor dual lane and uh, an Undying Viper dual lane here. Would probably be the best way to go for it. Tangerine Rabbit going to be taking up this mid Pugna. And uh, we'll just break down the Radiant as we wait for the Dire to make their move here. It's going to be Da Vinci alongside Dieter here and Paschetti. They're going to be going in this bottom tri-lane, and Uncle Yar, he's going to be up top lane with the solo lane Phoenix here, and that's going to leave N2K on the mid lane Windrunner. He's been pretty fantastic so far, game one, absolutely dominating. And Jib, he's going to be going bottom lane with actually his entire team. Do we have a smoke up or anything here that they could perhaps look to catch out somebody and get a first bud? Pasquetti going to be throwing out the good luck, have fun. Saf, Tangerine, Rabbit, not far behind. Silencer, very far ahead though. It looks like it will be a core silencer here. Crab's going to be running a tri-lane with the uh, the Silencer, the Undying, the Witch Doctor, and then just run a safe lane solo. Viper here could be possible as well. Up against the Phoenix, the Viper will do quite well. 
It's a pretty difficult tri lane to deal with here. The last word, the tombstone, as well as the witch doctor throwing the cask around with this nice new immortal. He got a monkey on his back. Looks like Pascetti does see them. They didn't actually opt to smoke up here and won't be able to get the kill. So they're going to see them in their jungle. We'll see if the Dyer's going to look to place down a Sentry Ward or anything here. Just to uh, make sure they can prevent the Radiant from using that pull camp. At least the first time, perhaps going to slow it down a bit. We saw last game that the Radiant actually missed the Dyer Ward. It was on the Magic Bush here and they missed it with two wards. Or they, they, they missed it with the first one. Barely caught it with the second one, but they didn't notice till about a minute or two later, which was pretty detrimental for them. Not having that pull camp, very annoying. And it looks like it's going to be dual lanes here, so it's going to be Saf alongside Prompt, bot lane, Viper and Undying mid lane, will be Tangerine Rabbit. Capanese does just throw it on a Sentry Ward mid lane, make sure there's nothing there that's uh, going to help the Windrunner. And uh, that's going to leave, yeah, the Witch Doctor, Capanese, alongside Anne Jib, top lane with their dual lane silencer, Witch Doctor. So we'll have to see how this goes. We'll uh, bring up the last hits here, try to see who's going to be winning. For the most part. It's a one for two. Nobody's gotten one just yet here. Looks like we're just in the mid lane so far. Saf. Nice positioning here for him. Dieter actually standing quite far back right now. Viper is really controlling the lane. Prompt if he lays down the tombstone right now. Actually, they're going to go on him right now. The Rocket Barrage doing so much damage right now. Is Prompt going to be the first blood? It looks like maybe he's going to go down. There it is. The last hit's going to go to Dieter. They're going to grab the tombstone as well. Dieter's taking quite a bit of damage. Actually, the last hit going to Da Vinci there. He's going to be able to get the uh, first blood gold for himself. And if he would have laid down the tombstone a little bit faster, you have to kind of wonder if one or two more zombies could have turned that team fight. But a little bit of an odd position for him. They're getting a little over aggressive. And it's going to... Uh, Ensure that they get the first blood on this tri lane bot. So, pretty annoying for uh, Saf as well as Prompt here. They really don't want that to happen. They want to at least come out even or even get a kill of their own. The dual lane, it's already, you know, fairly greedy here. Uh, Uncle Yar, though, level 1, just barely getting a little bit of EXP here. So hard to lane against the Witch Doctor. He's got 57 base damage. And he doesn't even have any items. No Nell Talisman. He's got one branch. He's got the cask as well. Uncle Yar looks like he wants to pressure up for this rune here. Capanese is close by as well though. Both mid players still just sitting in their lanes. Neither coming to help uh, their off laner or their support here. As Uncle Yar, he's going in for it right now. It's going to be a DD. And just look at that right click. 96 damage there with the armor reductions. And that's definitely not what you want to do as Uncle Yar. You want to try and steal that rune. Don't want to spend dive for it or you could find yourself in a pretty... Uh, Ugly spot here is Tangerine Rabbit going to throw down the uh, Decrepify Nether Blast. Going to do quite a bit to N2K actually. Is 9 for 8 up on the Silencer. 9 for 7 up on N2K. So he's doing pretty well in the mid lane here. Kony trading a little bit of uh, right clicks here up against Da Vinci. There's a nice two man uh, Decay there. Is Da Vinci getting quite low right now. Saf with some nice harass. The Decay is doing a lot of work here. Stealing that strength. At about 14 strength right now. And doing a good job denying and last hitting here. Despite Uncle Yard being so far away right now. Nowhere near the levels he needs. And this is where the dual lanes are really paying off so far for the Dyer. Got a level 4, uh, or excuse me, a level 2 on the Undying. Level 2 on the Lion, and probably the Dazzle as well. They did manage to get the first blood, which is pretty huge. But the biggest thing is that the Phoenix is so far behind. And they're really going to need the Supernova early on if they want to fight. Got a lot more early fighting here. We'll see if the Pugna is going to look to get something like an early mechanism. and They can really push with the heals from the mechanism, the Witch Doctor, as well as the Undying here. Spot lane getting just a lot of back and forth ability usage here. A wand would be very good in this lane for uh, both supports or Dieter here. Looks like he's going to jump into the side lane here, pick up probably boots, maybe a wand here. And it looks like, yeah, he will pick up both boots and a wand. Just mid lane and 2k getting pretty aggressive here up against Tangerine Rabbit. Does have three points into the power shot, which is quite a bit of damage. If he's able to land it and then follow up with a wind run, could get a, get a kill behind the tower here. If there's a, a little bit of a misplay with the Decrepify, and there's a power shot going through the creep wave. N2K still securing some nice last hits here. He's 19 for 9 up against the 9 for 4 of Tangerine Rabbit. He's going to be moving top to secure this rune. and That's going to leave Bot Rune over to the Undying, actually. So the Undying's going to be picking it up. Da Vinci looking like they want to come up behind him there. No, they're actually going to go on a Saf here. He's taking a lot of damage from the Rocket Barrage. Only had about 200 HP. They can't follow it up, though. They didn't have the stun from Pasquetti, and that's really what they needed. Looks like he is going to throw out the stun over here onto Prompt, but not going to be able to do too much here. Witch Doctor actually 
Did he just get a kill onto the Phoenix there? He did get a solo kill, I believe. Maybe not. Looks like uh, they both spent on it. and It's going to be a nice pickup for the Silencer. Not going to get the Intelligence stolen, unfortunately, for him. So maybe the Witch Doctor getting the last right click. And it is going to be a pause here. What would our D2L be without one? Four minutes and 33 seconds in. Looks like Capanese does need something. Just breaking down the lane so far. Undying, still not enough gold for boots here. Does have the Stout Shield going to tank him up quite a bit. Looks like Saf going to be uh, off to the side, pick up his boots. And uh, I believe last game we did talk about this real quick, but Capanese is horror, horror, horror. I'm pretty sure um, these guys in RD2L like to change their names quite often. So I, I believe that's horror, horror, horror. Uh, I think he left last game, but pretty sure he's up on this Witch Doctor here with that funky immortal. Did a pretty good job on that one, in my opinion, aside from a few bugs if he uses the taunt. But still a pretty cool looking immortal here. Gyrocopter doesn't have the immortal himself, though. Saf going into the side shop here. We'll see what he's picking up. I don't know if he just bought his boots or if he's going to be looking to grab something here. And there we go. Tangerine Rabbit giving the go-ahead. Still looks like we're waiting, though. There we go. Wall of Assault Slingers. Previously known, I believe, as uh, Why, so or Why, so Why So Sexy? Why So Sexy, I think, is what... They used to go by, obviously they had some type of uh, mid-season name change or something, but I, I did cast a couple games between these guys, Dieter, Da Vinci, Paschetti. Uh, you know, I casted a bunch of their Hora Hora. He was on the team as well. Still is, just under a different name. So a little bit of a rebranding here. Uh, Zayon LMAO, they're uh, doing pretty well here. Going to get a nice pull. Actually not going to get the stack though. Unfortunately for him, he is going to go back into the lane, though, and, and really just aggressively push out Uncle Yar, who's still gotten very little XP, still sitting at level 1, and look at this, it looks like they're ready to go on a prompt, he is going to land it on the tombstone, there's the sun going down, does he have a heal? No, it looks like maybe going to be enough with the strike still, though, one more right click, and he will get killed here, it looks like the creep going to be enough to secure the kill, Saf is chasing quite far, though, but Dieter does have that nice one that he did pick up, and... Managed to save himself there. Is Coney going to get stunned up? And is he actually going to be the next kill? Dieter does actually solve up. He's continuing to go on him. Rocket Barrage is going to be enough. And that's going to be a two for Nail Bot lane. Getting a little bit too aggressive there. Tombstone not doing enough work. So this dual lane for uh, AL is not really working out as well as they would have hoped here. Prompt and Saf playing uh, perhaps a little bit too aggressive. He is going to finally pick up his boots here. But probably wanted that level four. To get the soul rip would have been enough with the heal to keep him alive potentially here. And he is going to grab this this rune here. And perhaps going to die for it though. He's going to get a nice double decay there. Surprisingly going to get Da Vinci on the back side of that one. As Paschetti does stun him up and steal some of his mana. Does elect for the full wand here. Not even going to get just the, the magic stick and boots. Which probably would have been a better idea. But not too bad whatsoever here. And Going to be moving in towards mid lane. Tangerine Rabbit not doing too bad. 16 for 4 up against the 32 for 13 though. So N2K yet again dominating his lane. We saw him do it uh, last game. I believe as the co-op there. So look at the damage up against Tangerine Rabbit there. Another couple right clicks. And he could perhaps look to make it go on to this one. He's going to throw out the shackle. Is he going to use the wind run as well? No. The haste rune. Tangerine Rabbit going to get a nice bottle up there for himself. Phase boot's going to be brought out here to the mid lane wind runner. As top lane Uncle Yar still not level 2 yet. He's at about 1.5. So it won't be too much longer. Especially with this creep wave. Moving in, they're really going to have to harass him out here. Perhaps getting a kill with the cask. He does have level 2 now, as well as the dive. So, most likely shouldn't be able to get a kill. Although, they do have the global silence, though. So, this could mean that bot lane and mid lane will have a little bit more kill potential. N2K, actually, as I talk about that, is getting quite low here. Does he have a salve on the line? Still, he does. So, he'll probably give the salve over here to N2K. And there it is. So, N2K, not going to have to return home anytime soon. Doesn't have much mana, but does have the phase boots to help him last it here. So, not going to be too bad. And finally... Phoenix getting the levels. Uncle Yar almost at about level 3 here. Is Saf and Prompt bot lane. They're only at about level 4 and 5. So not too much further ahead despite the dual lanes. And they gave quite a bit up over here to Dieter, Da Vinci. As well as Paschetti who's level 4 himself. So despite being in a tri lane, they're able to uh, keep up pretty well here. Phase Boots finally getting brought out to this mid lane. And look at that damage. Already hitting at about 100 damage. Witch Doctor, looking like he wants to rotate mid. Does throw up the aggressive Observer Ward, but they've got an Observer Ward of their own, and they uh, won't be able to really catch him too off guard here. I don't think he saw him walk up that cliff there. His prompt is going to find himself another Illusion Rune, so not the Rune he would hope for, and 
It looks like they want to make a go on a Sapphire. There's the Rocket Barrage as well as the Poison Stick. We do have a TP in here, though, from the Wish Doctor. Sap not going to be low enough. Do we have the Cask? Cask is going to be thrown out. Paschetti is going to bounce over to Dieter, but that's going to be about it. They shouldn't be able to chase this too much farther. There's a stun out. Actually going to miss. Paschetti's trying to run back to Vinci. Throwing in a couple right clicks to try and phase him out a little bit more. Dieter going to dip into the trees. Does have a TP scroll if he wants to use it. It looks like he will. They don't have another stun, and nobody's going to go down there, so... Looked like it could have been a little bit sketchy there for both teams. Saf getting a little bit low in his trees, and they did have a nice little retreat plan there. The Lion, as well as the Dazzle not getting caught. They did have to TP home there on the Gyrocopter, and he's just going to have to run all the way back, which is a little bit annoying, and Tangerine Rabbit now getting very aggressive up on this tower here. Just under, or just over half HP, actually, so does have his treads. Nine minutes in, and he is level eight, so he's not doing too bad. Getting close to that level nine. Uncle Yar now being left alone top lane. A silencer, it looks like his bot lane. There's the cast going to be thrown out. It's going to bounce between both Dieter and Da Vinci, though. Meanwhile, Paschetti's getting a little bit silenced. The call that was used, Paschetti is going to throw it on the sun on a sap. He's going to go down, actually. And it looks like the silencer, if Aeon Jim goes down right now, this is going to be absolutely huge. They don't have a cask. They don't have a global. They don't have a heal right now. Dieter, he's just going to have to turn around a man fight. Aeon Jim's going to survive. Caponese is actually going to go down just to the right clicks here from the lion. And Aeon Jim just going to TP out. Is he going to be able to get out they don't have a stun and looks like he should be all right prompt is just gonna walk away as well so looks like a two for one looks like no the power shot from n2k just barely catching on dying does manage to finish his mana boots there but a nice little snipe from her is gonna uh, secure herself a kill so she's one for nil and she's 48 and 21 as well so leading on the last hits the silencer is nearby not doing too bad himself and which doctor is gonna rotate top lane three points into that cask now getting very close to the death ward and that's most likely when the Dyer's really going to want to group up and fight here. We do have the Tranquil Boots on the line getting picked up. and Got 100 gold himself. Ward coverage. Not doing too bad for either team. The Radiant's got a lot of defensive wards on their side of the river here. Especially this one mid lane. We might, meanwhile, Tangerine Rabbit getting a little bit sketchy here. There's the Uncle Yar posting up. But look at the damage there just from the Nether Blast. Going to be so scary. He's got a DD rune though. And that could be just enough to keep him alive a little bit longer. And there it is. He is going to go down the stun from Paschetti. Going to be enough to secure the kill. And that's going to give him his level 6 as well. So the finger is online. And now they've got to be very careful with who they show with this prompt. Could die to uh, just a couple heroes there. The line plus one could secure a kill on just about anybody there. The finger is quite a bit of damage early on. He's got the stun as well. If he's got a full mana pool, the stun and the finger, actually, he's able to use them both in not too long now if he just uh, starts using the mana drain on one of these neutral creeps here. Is Uncle Yar still with that DD. Not doing too bad. He's almost level six himself here, so it's going to be pretty tough to fight up against that supernova now. And they tried to delay it for as long as they could, but 11 minutes in, they can't really do much more at this point. And... Saf does find level 6 of his own prompt, grabs his level 6 as well. He's going to throw it into his ultimate. Sometimes we see uh, another point uh, into one of his other abilities. The ultimate isn't too great, but look at the damage on N2K here. Just so strong. You know, he doesn't have to deal with the physical damage there because of the wind run, but that's not going to help all too much. He's just barely getting out of that nether blast there. Going to be able to keep himself alive as Tangerine Rabbit. Starting to dominate this lane now, and he's probably going to be pushing into this tower even more. So the tower mid lane is almost going to go down and... That's going to start reducing some of the map vision. They do still have this mid lane ward, which is going to be pretty helpful as well. But Some nice damage over here from the Pugna. He's going to throw it on one more. And oh no, it's in deny range now. Really has to turn around and throw it down. But it looks like N2K actually just going to be uh, getting the deny. As Paschetti does going to kill bot lane onto the Undying. He's going to get a double kill actually on Paschetti. Surprisingly enough, did spend the finger. It looks like on the second kill. The first one perhaps securing him with the stun there. But... Unfortunately, missing those ones. Tangerine Rabbit does find himself a regen rune. Going to be moving back towards mid lane. And uh, going to be going up against N2K here. They really don't have too much CC on the side of the uh, the Dire here. So, Gyrocopter pretty comfortable uh, not grabbing a BKB almost instantly here. Can't skip it. Kind of delay it by a little bit. Get some lifesteal. Perhaps a Yasha, something like that. Alongside his Aquila. And, I mean, really... It's not going to stop the Viper Strike. It's not going to stop the Death Ward. It'll stop the Cask as well as the Silences. But uh, if you're team fighting well and using the Initiation on your side, the Silences aren't going to do that much. There's the Shackle. Actually not going to land. And he even wind runs the wrong creep. So a little bit odd from N2K. They're usually a pretty solid player. But going to miss out on that. We did have the TP in here from the Dazzle. But it's going to cancel it after the uh, Cask doesn't bounce on. And Saf and Prompt just behind their tower. Looks like bot lane, we're going to have a TP in. Lion's getting quite low though, mid lane, the life drain, look at that range! 
absolutely massive range and now they're pinging it out saying hey he's got a ward there not sure how he saw me and that's gonna be a dominating streak going over here to tangerine rabbit what did he just grab it looks like the staff of wizardry so perhaps gonna be looking at a dig on here on the side of tangerine rabbit which maybe means that the gyrocopter will have to get in a little bit of an earlier bkb here is looks like prompt placing a very aggressive observer ward they do want to push this tower here they've got all five it looks like bot lane and jib not far off of Tangerine Rabbit here, so they are posting up, getting ready to push down this tower. Prompts in the front lanes as well, and it looks like the range is just going to have to give it up. So uh, this is what they want to do now. They've got all five heroes, they've got their level sixes, and they're just going to look to push down towers. They're going to spend the fortify, but they could continue to go after this as well. I really don't think they can pressure them back here. The Gyrocopter, they're going to have to have a really nice supernova into a call down. The slow from the call down and the supernova perhaps going to be enough to uh, secure a, a good team fight advantage here. Is Looks like they are just going to continue to go here. Prompt still has the mana boots to supply his team if they need it. And it looks like Uncle Yar getting ready to uh, pressure them here. It's, it does have spirits if he wants to throw them out. And that looks like is will be what he's going to do there. Not going to hit on anybody just yet though. And here we go. The siege is going to start. Tangerine Rabbit going to get uh, at least one off so far. There's the second Nether Blast. And this tower has already lost about 600 HP. The Radiant has to come back if they really want to defend it here. They've got a lot of heals. With the Witch Doctor as well as the Undying here. They are going to try and throw up. There's the Tombstone actually. Prompt just taking quite a bit of damage though. And 2k. Is he going to be able to get him with a Shackle Shot? It looks like he's not going to go for it. Just turning onto the Tombstone right away. But look at the damage. And 2k already going down. There's the Shallow Grave going to be spent on him. It looks like we're going to have a TP in from the Gyrocopter. Global Silence going to be used. Call down Gyrocopter. Not going to be able to TP. And he actually cancelled it. He's going to turn around past Getty, getting quite low. Going to spend out the finger, but it's not going to be able to get the kill. There's the dive in from the Phoenix. Is he going to be able to get anything here? The damage is getting quite a bit over time from the Fire Spirits, as well as the dive from Pasquetti. Just look at the silencer laying into him. It looks like he's going to lay down the Death Ward, as well as the Supernova. They've got to right-click the Supernova down. It looks like they will get it. And there's the two Intelligence going to Aeon Jim. So they managed to get the tower, as well as two heroes. And just barely living here. The Witch Doctor is so low. Aeon Jib so low. If only the Gyrocopter... Didn't cancel that TP, getting a little bit too trigger happy would have been an absolutely massive call down. I imagine the dive into the supernova would have been not far behind and it's actually going to be a uh, necro book here. So they're looking to just increase this pushing power. They have Tangerine Rabbit, 1-1-1, one, one, and one. he's 54-5. and five. We take a look at the net worth, so he's leading only by 100, but he's still leading. And Silencer's not far off of him either, so he's doing pretty well now. And they're just going to look to get this top tower. Nice shackle shot, though. Can he get the kill? I don't believe so. He should be able to decrep himself. And perhaps even uh, actually going to decrep her. Is she going to be able to get the power shot? It looks like, yeah, she is. And uh, one or two more right clicks is going to be the death of him. But he's going to get healed. And there's the mechanism as well. Onto the silencer. It looks like actually he's going to be the one with the mechanism. He's going to throw out the last word. Not going to be able to continue to chase that one if they don't have any CC. And looks like silencer moving into a BKB does spend, like I said, the mechanism there. Looks like Saf's going to have this fire around him pretty well all game. Casting from a VOD, that happens quite often here as Windrunner going to start taking the net worth lead here. And take a look at the graphs though, they're actually not that far behind. So they're only about a thousand lead over here from AL. And uh, the net worth, or excuse me, the EXP is actually uh, in favor of WSS. So they're doing a pretty good job of separating themselves and, and really uh, trading out this farm. As looks like they just want to get this tower right now. And Jib going to go for the right clicks here. Are they going to be able to deny it? It looks like maybe... Yes, no, Pugna actually going to be able to get the kill. There's Pasquetti throwing up the Hex. He doesn't have figures just yet. The Shackle on it too, though. Capone is going to go down. Pasquetti getting so low. They're already going to spend that. It looks like they're going to throw down the Death Ward. There's the Call. They're actually going to land up four heroes. So much damage from the Gyrocopter so far. Sass getting low. Prompt's getting low. Amgen's going to throw down the Global Silence. Dieter's turning around. He does pop the wad. And he's going to turn around and run back again. Dieter getting so low. DaVinci with the heals. Is he going to be able to get one more Tangerine Rabbit turning around? One more right click. Two more right clicks. And it's going to be a five. No, a four for four trade when all said and done the wind runner not there did have to tp out they did manage to get a tower and if we take a look at the fight recap it's actually going to be in favor of wss believe it or not and it looks like they're not done just yet n2k he's gonna actually find the power shot tangerine rabbit excuse me is he gonna be able to turn around and just throw down the life drain looks like perhaps if he wants to actually gonna look for the juke did they see him Oh, N2K. He didn't catch him. He did catch him there, though. He sees him with the power shot. He's going to TP up, but no, he's going to get shackled up. He should just turn around and life drain here. Looks like that's what it's going to be to do. And is he going to be able to get it? The life drain is doing so much work. N2K. Tangerine Rabbit's going to get the kill. Uncle Yar is going to turn around, though, and at least get the dominating streak. So not all is lost, but 
little bit uh, aggressive here from Windrunner. He probably could have gotten the kill much faster if he would have thrown down the Nether Blast as well. Certainly had enough mana there, and he's actually got the level 2 Necrobook very close to the level 3 Necrobook here. And are they going to be able to stop the push next time? I don't think so. Da Vinci does have an urn here. So we're going to be able to heal his team, but an urn, not the greatest defensive healing item is... Really, when you're team fighting this much, what are you going to do with an urn? You maybe put it on an enemy. Certainly not going to use it for the heals here. As Shadowcopter is moving in towards his BKB now. Silencer, is he any much any closer? It looks like no, he's not. We do have an item getting ferried out now. It looks like the Ogre Club over here for Saf. Moving into his Aghanim Scepter. Just about halfway there now. A little bit over halfway. So, only about 2,000 gold off that before he can grab it as Necro 2. Up for Tangerine Rabbit. Very close to Necro 3. Like I said, only about a few hundred gold off. Should be grabbing it quite soon. Is going to TP mid. They're looking to perhaps get this mid tier 2. They do have both bottom towers down as well as the tier 1 top. And it uh, looks like both teams converging on the mid lane. The call down was absolutely huge last fight. Pretty well secured them that fight. Uh, not really being a big loss. As uh, the Radiant looked like they were really going to lose that one. But the call down landing on about 3 or 4 heroes there. Was absolutely massive in terms of, in terms of damage done there. And, Looks like they're drawing it out. Aeon Jib is going to find Pasquetti there. There's the instant Hex up, though. They do have the finger on the line if they want to spend it. He is going to miss the Hex, though. They do have the Global Silence if they still want to use it. Mechanism still on cooldown as well. Looks like they're going to turn it on N2K, taking quite a bit of damage. There's the call down. Actually only going to land on two this time, though. Aeon Jib does turn on the Global Silence as well as the Mechanism. Look at the life drain on a Dieter. He's going to pop absolutely instantly. Pasquetti does have the finger up if he wants to spend it. Turn around looking for the Impale. Not going to be able to grab that one. Da Vinci getting slowed down here from these skeletons, but not going to be able to... Uh, secure the kill is again they don't have any cc it looks like they're gonna be going over here on a Capanese though there's the wind run the focus fire doing so much damage though Capanese gonna get to crippled fight up it looks like he is gonna go down at least to the power shop but not before she trades her own life there da vinci getting quite low as well should pop to the silencer though there's the shallow grave to keep him alive and Prompt is close by, though. Still looking to push this tower. Do they have the Necro Book up? They do have the Necro Book up, and it's a Necro 3 now, so maybe they don't even want to spend it. If they can hold the Necro Book for now and then grab it later on, it's actually a Midas. A Midas on the Phoenix, so... All right, they're just going ham, looking to uh, really pressure it and push it into the late game. They've got the Midas on the Phoenix. Not going to be able to get this mid-tower. They do have the Necro 3 now, though, and... That means it's going to get scarier and scarier each time they fight. They could actually pop the Necro for the fight now. And it'll do quite a bit of damage, especially if they just target it on somebody like the Lion. Uh, perhaps even somebody like the Dazzle. Get rid of a lot of that mana. Got to be a little bit more careful with how they spend it. Especially with the Nether Ward as well. If you can only cast a couple of abilities. And you got to cast them because uh, the Necro units are forcing you to do it. And If they play it well, it could be pretty difficult here. Prompt. And 2k looks like he wants to go for the kill. He's got the focus fire. There's the shackle up. It's going to latch onto a creep prompt. Should be going down here, I imagine. Won't be able to heal him up. And was getting pretty close to the uh, the medallion, at least. Probably, maybe could have saved him there with three points into the soul rip. Medallion into a soul rip. This power shot probably would have been enough to get the kill as well, though. So, just a game of what ifs here. And just look at the ward coverage from both teams here. The Radiant... Again, with defensive wards in their own end here. They've only really got this one in the jungle. The Dire, though, with very aggressive wards. It looks like they want to make a go over here on a Pasquetti. There's the call down. Actually going to land on two. So the Witch Charger is going to go down almost instantly. They've got to turn around. This is a beautiful Supernova right now. Actually slowing down three heroes. And that's going to be that. Uncle Yair is going to turn around, save his team. Pasquetti not going to die there. And that's the most important thing. As Undying does come back, has the Medallion here as well. Just look at the negative armor over here onto Saf. Medallion's going to really be effective in these team fights when they do get the weave off. and Even if they can put it on somebody else, the Death Ward channel is going to be doing so much damage. So it looks like they're ready to take this, uh, this small stack here. Going to look to stack it actually, but not going to be able to do so as they're moving into the Roshan pit. They are getting pinged out here over from uh, the, the Radiant, I believe. Actually, no, they haven't pinged it out yet. I don't think they can see it because it's nighttime. They can't see them walk in just yet, so even if it was daytime, they wouldn't be able to see that. So they didn't see them walk in, and this is going to be a free Roshan here, especially thanks to that medallion. So very annoying here. Prompt just sitting on the outside using the medallion. Silencer Aeon Jib is pinging something out here saying, hey guys, something's going on. Maybe they know, but uh, they certainly don't. They're all just sitting around in their jungle, and Tangerine Rabbit going to be the one to tank it up a little bit. They do have the mechanism. He's got the regen rune as well if they need to use it. So there's the Aegis going down. We'll see who wants to pick it up. It looks like it will be Aeon Jib here. 
As Uncle Yar wants to get aggressive here. N2K does have a DD rune. Could absolutely blow up a hero if he wants to. It looks like Anjib going to be the target here. Not going to be able to shackle him up. The rest are just going to TP out inside the Roche pit. Anjib just going to juke that power shot. And Uncle Yar moving into the pit saying, guys, what the heck is going on? He's got 1,500 gold after grabbing that Midas. So not doing too bad himself here. This AL really getting aggressive here. They've got the Aegis now. And they'll really want to push this. Do they have the BKB just yet? Still no BKB on the Silencer. Do we have the Aghanim Scepter on Saf? No, very close. Only about 800 gold off that Aghanim Scepter. And perhaps they'll wait for those items. But I think they can easily pressure. They should see that Uncle Yar's got the Midas here. So if they see that Uncle Yar's got the Midas, they'll probably want to pressure. He's not going to have an Atos or a Shivas or really anything like that here. It's Tangerine Rabbit. Getting pretty aggressive here. Ready to go on Dieter. There's the Decrepify being used. As well as just look at the damage from the one Nether Blast. And the range on the Life Drain as well. Down to about 400 HP. Was full. We're going to have the full TPs in here from Da Vinci as well as N2K. Yet again N2K looking to hide something fierce there. It just looks like he's going to blink up. There's the Shackle. Actually going to land on two. But N2K isn't going to be worth it. Tangerine Rabbit's going to mech get the mech at least. He's going to be able to secure a little bit more HP there before he goes down. The Gyrocopter doing so much work though. Windrun is going to go down. The Necrobooks are still standing strong. Pasquetti does have the finger. Is going to throw the hex over here on the sap sap just gonna be turning around and running right back into the fight as they want to keep going they do have the global silence i believe as well as the ulti from prompt still going strong there and they've got the death ward as well they've got the heal still going prompt not gonna be doing too much there it's just gonna use the soul rip and can they fight the gyrocopter has nothing he is going home trying to regen up whatever he can here they do still have the one necro minion at the very least here they don't have the nether blast which is gonna be very unfortunate Capanese in a nice position to channel a death ward here across the way Perhaps get himself a little bit of damage there. As they are going to throw out the Fire Spirits. And Jib, got to be careful. If they could make them run back over here into the trees. Just channel a Death Ward. It could be absolutely devastating here. But looks like they're not going to get too aggressive there. Paschetti is going to try and drain some mana. Not going to be able to do so as Gyrocopter. Just going to last at the creep instead. And They will see this stack here. They are going to put up the Observer Ward as well actually. So... They did see them place at least one ward. They pinged it out. and Now they're probably going to get dewarded almost instantaneously, I'd imagine, here. Is again, just the aggressive wards over here from the Dire. Gyrocopter saying, all right, I'm going to take this right now. Can't really risk them stealing it. and It is uh, at least a triple stack, so not too bad there for himself. Do have a double stack over here. And 19 to 15. Windrunner looking to try to get some more damage done here, though. She's got to be careful. There's the life drain being used. There's the heal. Is it going to be enough? Just barely going to be enough to kill her before she can TP out. And that's 54 seconds without a Windrunner. And uh, N2K. Nice la. Da Vinci pressuring up mid lane, but Tangerine Rabbit just going to uh, pretty much reduce any of the work he was doing there. With one little nether blast, and we do have the BKB up from the silencer now as well. So, we're going to be able to, to uh, survive a lot of that burst damage from the gyrocopter, the call down. As well as the rocket barrage, we saw Tangerine Rabbit blow up there. So, once he's got his BKB, it'll be a lot better for himself as well. And, what's this on the courier? It looks like Saf does finally have his Aghanim Scepter. And, the Viper Strike's going to be pretty good on such a low cooldown. They should see this, or they should expect it at least, that they did see Tangerine Rabbit there. And, He's uh, pretty close to the net worth of this gyrocopter. He's doing a pretty good job of farming. Looking like he wants to go for an MKB, oddly enough, here is they don't really have uh, any evasion or anything. I think a Scotty may have been the better decision here. They don't really need the damage. A lot of their damage is coming out here from, uh, I guess, maybe perhaps when they have the BKBs, they'll need it. But uh, you've already got the negative armor, the weave from Da Vinci here. Winrun are going to be outputting a lot of physical damage herself. Perhaps could be a Daedalus as well. Not certain that it's going to be an mkb perhaps even a rapier if they're a little bit afraid there's the mech going to be enough to save tangerine rabbit perhaps yeah there's the life drain as well now shackle shot or excuse me the power shot trying to secure the kill but not going to be enough in the urn he's just going to heal right up they've got so much heal on the side of the dire now and they're going to be ready to pressure this bot tower excuse me this top tower and uh really they shouldn't fight it here looks like the gyrocopter does have a tp in about four seconds if they want to fight it but Looks like they're just going to give it up, and that means that they're just going to continue to pressure here. There's the Decrepify Tangerine Rabbit using it on himself here. Is, is actually going for the Aghanim Scepter himself, not going for the BKB here. 
There's the Viper Strike on a Paschetti. And just look at the damage the Caldon gonna land on at least two heroes. It looks like only Tangerine, Rabbit, and Saf are gonna be the ones to take that. We've actually only gonna land on one hero. Meanwhile, Prompt is gonna start face tanking. There's the tube still going down. Looks like they are gonna throw down the homing missile. There's the global silence as well. Paschetti getting quite low right now, just taking so much damage from the silencer. Not gonna be able to secure the kill. They do at least get the Phoenix though. And just look at this. This tower is gonna be going down. Are we gonna be seeing at least a pre-30 minute rack? So your Tangerine Rabbit taking quite a bit of damage. Do they have the uh, mechanism? They do. They have it in two seconds here as well as the urn. They could use it if they want to. There's N2K getting Viper Strike. They've got the mechanism still. The Shackle gonna land on two heroes. There's the BKB from Dieter as well as Aeon Jib. And just look at the damage that Aeon Jib's outputting here compared to Dieter doing absolutely nothing. The Life Drain gonna be doing a ton of work as well. There's the Supernova gonna land that. The stun on Prompt is gonna ensure that he's gonna go down. It looks like there's a double kill over here for Uncle Yar. The damage from the Supernova absolutely massive there. Did have to buy back for it, but at the very least gonna get two kills, so not the worst. Still has the Midas as well, so gonna be pretty happy with that one. As we'll see what he's gonna want to grab here, if it's gonna be an Atos. Perhaps gonna be uh, something like a Shiva's Guard would be a pretty good option here as well. He's moving in towards the Secret Shop though, and it looks like it will be a Shiva's Guard. Gonna grab the Plate Mail first, before anything else. And that fight looked like it was gonna go way down the drain for the Radiant, but a nice buyback there. From Uncle Yar, gonna be able to secure two kills for himself. Meanwhile, Tangerine Rabbit and Aeon Jib both just in the jungle here. Both of them surviving though is pretty huge. As uh, they're both very farmed right now. We almost have the Aghanim Scepter there from the Pugna. Aeon Jib does have the BKB and 1800 gold. So once he starts stacking actual damage items, it's gonna be so scary. Already has 16 intelligence here. It's, looks like maybe gonna be able to get the deny. They are gonna just throw up the uh, glyph on the tower. It's going to be hard to uh, deny up against that. Can they get it? No, the catapult should get it there. Yeah, actually, prompt helping out the catapult a little bit there. So they're going to miss that deny, unfortunately for them. Probably a little bit upset with that one. As a mid lane, Paschetti pushing out a little bit here. Now we see his blink dagger. The Radiant with some nice wards now. The Dire with absolutely no wards. This map is so dark for them and... Are they looking to smoke? They do have the Glimmer Cape as well as the Solar Crest. So all the items coming together here. Perhaps she's going to wait for the Pugna to finish up his Aghanim Scepter before they fight one more time. Roshan, not going to be too much longer before he respawns. And that could be the next point of contention for both teams here. As uh, an Aegis could spell the end of WSS for sure here. Perhaps not as much for AL, but could be very dangerous for them as well. Vinci does have a sentry, does uh, throw it down just in the river, make sure that there's no wards there. It's a nice little DD though, and I could be pretty effective at grabbing Roshan if they do want to grab it. Don't have a bottle on anybody, I believe, though they do actually. So N2K's got a bottle if he wants to take it. Does see it now, I believe, with the power shot, but there's the Aghanim Scepter, and there's the MKB, so both teams getting their items. Phoenix actually... She's going to be going for a pipe here, it looks like. So, grabbing the plate mail and instead opting to go for a pipe, wasting 1,400 gold. They are going to smoke up here. And are they going to be able to find N2K? Who's the initiator going to be here? N2K does have a blink dagger. Can they catch him? Looks like it is going to pop. N2K barely blinking, though. Perhaps could be the end of him. Can they stop it? It looks like no. They won't be able to stop it, unfortunately, for them. And N2K with a panic blink. Freaking out. Drawing over the map, saying, hey, guys, they're here. Everybody get the heck out. Prompt still smoked up, oddly enough, but they really had no initiation there. Surprisingly enough that they went for it. They are going to look for Roshan. Still a couple minutes there before he's going to be up. So unfortunately for them, not going to get an early Roshan. I'm sure that's what they're hoping for with that smoke. Hoping to get a smoke into a Rosh. Four staff up here for the silence. They're going to give him a little bit of uh, mobility as well as uh, a little bit more intelligence for his uh, unique attack modifier. Going to be doing quite a bit of damage here. Just look at the damage. The flat damage here. Not even using his glaives. Up against the Ancients going to be pretty huge. Just, they are just going to take down the Wild Wing. They don't know if Roshan's up yet. Still another minute, 40 seconds. And now they've got to start pressuring it to see if he actually is up. No Aghanim Scepter here on the N2K. So we're not going to be doing the Slasher build or anything like that. As we do see the Coconut be spent here. For Capanese, they are pressuring out this mid lane. There's the Power Shot though. Going to push it back a little bit as well as... Prompt is going to throw up a little bit of a heal for himself there. Zan Jib going to grab the regen rune. Still just waiting for Roche. I'm sorry, guys. Another minute 15 before he is up. And meanwhile, Paschetti doing a great job here of pressuring while the uh, the rest of the team is, is farming their uh, own perspective lanes or ancients or camps. So uh, the Radiant doing a really good job of splitting themselves up and farming and 
Just look at the net worth advantage that Gyro's managed to accrue here. And just look at how up and down this graph is. Slowly going into the way of WSS yet again. After they're really split pushing and, and farming pretty well here. They're moving into the opponent's jungle now. They know their jungle is not safe whatsoever. As WSS actually ahead in terms of EXP. I'd imagine a lot of that's due to the Midas over here from Uncle Yar. And uh, we'll see what he's going to pick up. Just the TP over here. So going to be trying to uh, push with his team as well. Do have the never-ending spirit there, so that's going to be here for the rest of the game. That's the Dire moving up towards the top tower. They see that they're pressuring it, and the Radiant doing a good job of pulling the entire team across the map yet again. We do see the Windrunner. She's farming separately. We do see Uncle Yard. He's farming separately as well. So both teams, or excuse me, just the Radiant really actually doing a, a lot of work in terms of pulling the enemy team back and forth and you know preventing them from securing the Roshan. Viper is going to get a tower deny. So they will at least deny the tower, but they still got the tower, so it'll be pretty useful as well. Sunray being used to farm here. You do have the Tranquil Boots, so no bothers with any of that here. Is Uncle Yar pretty close now to the uh, to the Pipe of Insight. And if he grabs that, it'll be a lot of damage reduction over here. Or a pretty big spell shield that they'll have to eat through on the side of the Dire here. And it looks like they're ready. They're checking Roshan. He is finally up now. Tangerine Rabbit going to be looking for it. They are going to find that Sentry Ward. They really don't have any vision. Actually, they do barely have vision there on the Radiant. And looks like the Dire is going to be grabbing it. And are they going to be able to uh, prevent this here? Da Vinci's all the way top lane. He's got a TP. And it looks like, no, they're not even going to try to stop this prompt. Taking it a little bit. Saf is not going to be the next one to tank a little bit. But Roshan dying pretty quickly here. Despite, uh, you know, these heroes not being classically the, the best heroes to uh, Roshan had. And it looks like Tangerine Rabbit's going to be the one to pick up the Aegis. And now they're going to immediately smoke up here. Kapanese wasn't caught in the smoke. Perhaps going to be looking for Dieter, but he does have an Invis rune. So if he pops the smoke, it's going to be absolutely huge for uh, his team here. As the Invis rune is going to drop soon. Smoke and Jib is going to pop soon. Dieter does see him, so there's the smoke going to be broken there. Looks like Pugnut's smoke's going to break for him as well. And uh, Dieter with a very lucky Invis rune here. Going to be enough to keep him alive as Da Vinci just going to run into the tree. Should probably just TP out here, in all honesty, is they find him it's going to be pretty annoying Dieter though right beside Saf and a Viper Strike could be huge does he have a TP he does but he's got to be careful are they going to spend the Viper Strike there it is they are going to spend the Viper Strike it's just going to BKB and TP out not going to be able to stop him there so nice little escape from him going to be enough to keep him alive and unfortunately though did have to spend the BKB and now with the Aegis they're going to be looking to pressure this top tower yet again meanwhile bot lane N2K doing a pretty good job of split pushing herself though and does have the focus fire in about 30 seconds if she wants to spend it Again, no Aghanim Scepter is, is really hurting her quite a bit. She's got the damage reduction as well as the, the really long cooldown here. Isn't even going to need to spend the Focus Fire, though. Should be able to get the tower. They do have a Fortify, but they're not going to spend it just on that. And she's not going to get the last hit, actually. So a little bit of uh, misplay from her, I think. That's the Dire now, though. They're pressuring up the lane. pasquetti has got a TP of his own, so they're doing a good job of pushing out the lanes as much as they can. If the Dire loses this fight, this is going to be absolutely massive here. And uh, there's the call down already, but look at the tower. It's already going to go down. They still got the mech. They've got plenty of heal over here on prompt as well. The Witch Doctor throwing up the Umbrella as well for his team. And just look at that. The Rax is going to go down. Windrunner looking to get the Rax herself. They did spend the Glyph. And all they need to do now is TP out. Or they could even rotate mid lane and get another Rax. There's no way this Windrunner can double Rax. She's out of mana. She's actually going to have to go home here. And it looks like they're ready to go. They're actually going to TP home. There's a TP mid over here for Mayon Jib. Paschetti just going to TP out instantly himself. So he's going to be able to survive here as... They are going to leave, but they did manage to get the barracks, so nice little pickup from them. As it looks like Undying going to be uh, grabbing a Vlad's next, so Vlad's now uh, working on ranged heroes. Going to be pretty good for his team, give them some lifesteal, some bonus damage. There's the coconut flying out there. And looks like uh, they still got the Aegis, though, and, and they're just really going to regroup, heal up a little bit, get some more mana over here onto this Witch Doctor, and... That's going to be uh, pretty much it for their team. Is they're going to be looking for another set of racks, perhaps the bot lane, try to spread them as thin as possible. I think that would probably be the the best option here. They still got the BKB uh, nine second duration. They've got the level three global science, and uh, they've got 3.3k on Aeon Jib. Surprisingly enough, not going to spend it. I imagine he would be looking to go for a sheep secure. Looks like he's actually going to turn around to the side shop or to the secret shop, excuse me, and go for something though. 
Looks like maybe not. Sticking around mid lane. Perhaps going to try to pick somebody off here, but he's got to be careful. Everybody's nearby. It looks like he wants to make a go on Uncle Yar, and he's got the Global Silence here if he wants to spend it. There's the four Staff up, though, and he should see that the Dazzle's there, and he's not going to be able to uh, secure a kill whatsoever. We do have a TPN mid here now. Are they going to be able to get the deny on the tower? Yes, they will. So a nice little deny for them. Tangerine Rabbit going to return mid over here with Aeon Jib, and uh, that's actually going to prevent the push, and now we've got a Satanic over here on the Gyrocopter, so dealing some nice damage. He's got some life steal. He's got a BKB now, and can they kill this gyrocopter? I think they really, really need... What did he grab here? I think they really need... Looks like uh, they're going to drop the Null Talisman. Get the uh, TP there. But I really think they need the Sheep Stick if they can kill this gyro. Perhaps the Blink Sheep. But they need the Sheep Initiation to burst him down before he can BKB Satanic. It looks like they're just going to go for the mid-racks here. Actually, uh, only another minute or so. Maybe two on that age just left. And... Tangerine Rabbit going to be uh, probably the one to stand up top here. As he wants to get rid of that Aegis if possible there. Soak up whatever damage you can. And it looks like they're ready to make a go on it. Dieter getting quite close here. Going to get Viper Striked. It looks like the uh, Phoenix is going to throw out some spirits as well. There's the call down. Actually not going to land on absolutely anybody here. Even going to uh, save a little bit of damage from this Necronomicon here. And they're just going to return with the next creep wave. So AL doing quite a bit of damage now. And the, actually, the blink in from N2K, though, has to be very careful. There's the Hex up on Aeon Jib. There's the stun as well. They're just going to use the Life Drain over here. Da Vinci getting Viper Strike next. There's the Tombstone going to be thrown up as well. This tower is going to go down. There's the Death Ward being channeled. The Glimmer Cape as well as the Global Silence going to be used. N2K just barely going to be kept alive with the mechanism. But now, they've got a Naked Barracks. And can they look to get it? Dieter doing so much damage right now with the Flat Cannon. And there's the Supernova. The dive in the Supernova a little bit too far, though, to be able to secure any more damage. Prompt is going to get stunned up. Not going to be able to heal himself. And they're not going to get the barracks so it looked like it was going to be a really good fight over here for the dire actually going to be in the radiance favor and are you kidding me n2k getting that shackle shot right before Cody could tp absolutely huge now so that's going to be three how did you have vision i'm i'm actually very confused there as well i have no idea how he got that he looked like he was right here so saf a little bit confused with that as well i have no idea how he shackled them. i actually have no idea how he shackled them there <laughs> N2K, I called Ice Frog, he told me, and now it looks like uh, they're just going to look to pressure this mid-racks. Place another ward a little bit too far up. They could easily just burst that down as they walk up. Probably should just put it kind of behind here. And looks like they will. So the nether ward's going to go down. 80 gold to Uncle Yar, who does have his pipe, and he's getting closer and closer to his Shiva's guard now. If only you could decrepify a tower. There's the life drain, though, under Dieter. And just look at that Aghanim Scepter life drain. The range as well as the damage is pretty ridiculous. Prompt is going it right up now. He's going to throw down the tombstone in the middle of every hero. Only a couple zombies going to be spawning though just yet. And Pasquetti going to TP out right away. They've got no stun. They've got absolutely no chase. How do they stop any of this? Really, they've got Cask and that's it. You would really hope for something like an Earthshaker, a Lina. Uh, really, anybody with a stun would be pretty helpful here. An Ogre Magi even. So it looks like uh, the Radiant. Excuse me, the Dyer is going to get ready and just start going down mid lane again. I think they need to keep the Aegis uh, on the Aeon Jib. Or if they're going to keep it on Tangerine Rabbit, he's got to be a little bit more aggressive. Even Saf would be a really good target. Just get him right in the front lines using that BKB, using that Viper Strike. They do have the Vladimir's on prompt now and they're going to be looking to get aggressive again. And if they lose this next team fight, I really don't see how they can come back. They are a Rax up, but they'll have way too much over here on the side of the Radiant. They've got much better late game. And AL, and they're really going all in right now on this barracks here. There's the homing missile going to be thrown out here onto prompt. Probably just going to eat it right away. Maybe not. Yeah, it is going to eat it, unfortunately for him. And there's the Viper Strike on Adidas. Still this guy's the BKB. Looks like he's going in for a crit here. It's... They are going to blink up. There's the Shackle. Not going to be able to land or latch onto anything. There's the cast going to be thrown out. Actually going to be jumping across all three heroes. Perhaps there. N2K and Pasquetti getting a little bit caught up between each other there. So pretty annoying for them. But no. Dyer just going to turn around. TP out onto staff. And uh, they're going to say, alright guys, that's the end of that. 41 minutes in. And looks like nobody's uh, a clear winner just yet here. But it's certainly getting harder and harder for the Dyer. And I'm sure right now they're, they're certainly feeling that grasp uh, really slip. Well, Result Shaker's looking to come back here. Dieter still just farming the jungle again. He's got 2.3k as well as a broadsword and uh, looks like probably going to be going for a, a Daedalus next, I'd imagine here. I doubt it's going to be anything uh, 
like uh, a blade mail. Roshan's actually up in about a minute 50, so a nice early respawn for whichever team could use it. Most likely the Dire. If they can get it, it's going to be pretty nice for them. Tangerine Robbie getting so low right now. Is he going to be able to do anything? There's the life drain. Is he going to be able to stay alive? He's getting so low. Da Vinci's forced to pop the shallow grave here. They're still going on him. Problem's getting quite low right now. They do spin the Witch Doctor. There's the Shackle, though. Is it going to be enough? Now he's using the Focus Fire, but no. There's the Call Down as well as the life drain. Yet again, Problem's getting so low. The Global Silence. Dieter's going to have to turn around and output whatever damage he can. The Necro Book is going to be used. He can just turn around and life drain him, though. Dieter does have... No, he does have the BKB, actually. He's going to get a double kill kill and just look at the damage from him doesn't have the satanic did actually use it that fight and it looks like now they're going to turn around over on the Dieter can they secure this kill again they've got absolutely no stuns doesn't have the mana to tp out though and this should be an easy kill for them they've got the viper strike there just barely now and that's going to be a dead gyrocopter pugna going to get the kill with his necro book units there and that's going to be a mega kill going the way of him so a two for two when all said and done uh, pretty important though that that the radiant actually got that despite dying on the gyrocopter that really buys them time They can't pressure if the gyrocopter didn't die there it would have been pretty huge, but You take what you can get and that's gonna at least delay the dire another little bit As Roshan gonna be up fairly soon here Uncle Yar pressuring up bot lane now not doing too bad still in terms of farm it's just throwing up fire spirits as well as using the uh, sun ray to farm and gonna get quite a bit there now up to 2.9k so he almost has Shiva's guard if he wants to grab it and now they're all mid lane now still just waiting on the pugna looks like they are gonna push down the lane probably should jump into these camps and, and seal them while they can I mean they're not gonna be pushing maybe they're gonna push without the, the pugna because there's no gyrocopter either pugna though should have just bought the boots of travel I think there Sold his two TBs, bought the boots of travel, a nice double shackle, there's this, the ultimate from the supernova is going to be absolutely huge, Pasquetti's jumping in, he's got the figure as well, it's going to be two dead, no, Aeon Jim just barely surviving, no, there's the blanket of the figure, he's going to try to BKB TP, actually going to not be able to TP there, does still have it if he wants to spend it, but it's not going to be enough, there's the shackle up, there's the power shot, and that's going to be a three for nail trade. An awful team fight, a beautiful blink in, N2K proving time and time again that he's a huge player for WSS. Yeah, he was fantastic as the Queen of Pain, I believe, is who he played last time. And now he's doing absolute work as this Windrunner, getting the two-man shackles that they need here. And it looks like they're ready to pressure this mid-tower now. Can they stop it? I'm really not sure. At least he's got better placement here on the Nether Ward. But the Witch Doctor, he's quite far away here. Does have a TP, though. So he is going to be able to pressure a little bit. He's going to use the cask and won't have it for 14 seconds. So won't be able to use the cask. The ultimate does have the Glimmer Cape. Do they have any True Sight? If he does Glimmer Cape, they do have one sentry, so they can put down the sentry. They've got dust as well, actually, so not going to be enough to just Glimmer Cape and ulti here. Tangerine Rabbit. Got to be pretty careful there. He is getting pinged out. Another ward going to go down almost instantly, though. There's the TP in from the skeleton, or excuse me, from the undying here. And now that's a mid racks. No, they are going to fortify it. Looks like they're getting ready to make a go here. The Witch Doctor hasn't even TP'd in just yet. N2K going to throw out the shackle yet again. And it looks like they're going to go. They are going to get the racks though. There's the Global Silence going to be used. Aeon Jibs going on to N2K though. The Windrun going to be enough to keep him alive. Paschetti turning around on the front. He's going to go down almost instantly. Dieter's getting very low though. Not going to be enough with the Satanic. And now it's the Dyer's turn to uh, push as hard as they can. They do have two buybacks, though, and that means they won't be able to do too much here. They did lose their mid-racks, and they've really got a pressure now. They've got the blink up on the Witch Doctor and the Octarine Core over here on Tang Tangerine Rabbit. Excuse me. Do have the urns as well to help heal them up a little bit. Quite a few urn charges, I'd imagine, as well. He's only got two left, actually, so not the most, but... There's the Shiva's Guard, and they've got the Shiva's Guard Supernova. The buyback from the Gyrocopter will have his ultimate by the time they get there, and... They're not going to be ready for this, and I, I feel like this is going to be a devastating fight right now. The Roshan is up. They should go for Rosh. And uh, there's the buyback already on the Gyrocopter. They need to turn around. They cannot go for this right now, and it looks like they're going to agree with that. They're just going to grab the buyback and turn around. So Gyrocopter getting a little bit trigger happy. He probably could have saved it there. They could have waited for the uh, the dive supernova, Shiva's guard, and probably could have bought back and TP'd in on the Gyrocopter then, but they are ready for the Roshan. They're going for it. They are going to pick up the Banner Rune. 143 gold going over to Aeon Jib. And we're now just about 50 minutes into this game here. Prompt now going to be the one tanking it up. Does get the uh, bonus armor as well as the miss chance here. And there's the stomp from Roshan. Going to do quite a bit of damage, but the Radiant not even defending this Roshan here. They're just going to kind of give it up, push out their lanes, and 
So yeah, I guess we'll just fight without it. And this could be enough for Ale to turn around and take the game. It's going to be Aegis and Cheese now. So Staff can get quite aggressive himself and Jib. He's got the Aegis now. He's going to be standing up top there. We've got the Blink Dagger from the Witch Doctor here. Not going to be getting shackled up. And uh, it looks like they're actually going to go for bot lane. So going to try and spread them apart as much as they can. As uh, we do have some nice farming over here by N2K. And actually, Silencer, are those Boots of Travels? No, just a hex. So he's going to have to just pretty much run all the way down to bot lane. Going to be waiting for them anyways, I imagine here. As Dieter is going to get decrepified up. Going to take a little bit of life drain damage and... Now going to be doing 220 drain per second, and I wonder how that works with Octarine Core. I wonder if it gives him a percentage of that as well. That would be pretty huge in terms of life steal and life drain there. As N2K just trying to run home. Does have Boots of Travel himself, though, and late game Boots of Travel is so helpful because he can just be a pest like this, push out the lanes, wait till the very last minute to TP home. And that's going to be very annoying as if they, if they can't push on this yet again. They're going to be, uh, I think the Radiant could just look to end it. If the lane's going to be pushing in this much, they could just go through that mid racks and, and go for the tier 4s here. As they're going to throw down the uh, stun over here on Aeon Jib. And they should really be pressuring it right now. They've got the Aegis anyways. Aeon Jib looks like he does just want to eat that. He's just going to grab it. Tangerine Rabbit going to get hexed up though. And he does have now the Creep Wave as well as the Necrobook. If he wants to spend it, going to get stunned up over here on the Tangerine Rabbit. Now he's got to be careful. It's just going to get managed in for a little bit. Aeon Jim now pressing up quite a bit. He does have the Sheep Stick. They should probably just spend the Sheep Stick onto the Gyrocopter and just look to burst him down. Tangerine Rabbit though, N2K, that's not the Shackle that you're looking for here. They're just going to back up after taking that. They know that there's a lot of Creeps top lane. They're going to get the Blade Mail over here uh, onto the Undying. and Perhaps just going to look to regen up a little bit. As, uh, no, they've got to return home here, so they wasted too much time. They didn't get pressured, or they didn't pressure as hard as they should have. They probably should have just gone for the racks here, and uh, instead they're going to have to return home. Undying now with quite a bit of armor, especially once he gets the blade mail. So uh, the secret shop here looks like we're going to have a shadow blade over here for, for staff, excuse me. Just the amulet so far. No, he does have the claymore as well. So it's going to be a shadow blade for him. Perhaps going to uh, try to look for initiation with that. But I think it's a little bit too late. Probably should have just gone for the blink. Probably could have grabbed blink Aegis. And then you just blink in Viper Strike. Soak up a ton of damage. Output as much damage as you can. The team behind you use the global silence. And we've actually got a BKB now onto Paschetti. And that's pretty going to be a huge next team fight. Not going to get global as, as long as he spends it properly. If he uses it after the global, if he waits for it, it's going to be very important for him. Uncle Yar has 3.4k himself now. And, and this is getting harder and harder for AL now. WSS is getting all the items they need. Da Vinci still uh, kind of poor. Does have 2.9k, so not doing too bad. Can grab a 4 staff for himself if he wants. It's going to be pretty effective up against the Tombstone Zombies. Uh, as well as perhaps saving uh, any fellow teammate. It's going to be a Yule Scepter over here for uh, Uncle Yar. So that's going to be nice. Going to be able to throw somebody up in the air while you uh, right before you put down the Supernova. And you won't have as many heroes hitting it. And So nice pickup from him as Dieter. Going to be pressuring top lane now. Pushing it out. Again, they are Mega Creeps. So not going to be getting really too much gold from them. But at the very least, going to be uh, putting on some pressure as well. So ensuring that their top lane isn't being pushed in. While they're getting pushed in bot lane as well. And it looks like the Dyer's ready to go. Do they still have the Aegis? They do. So they've really got to go with this next push here. As the Aegis isn't going to last much longer here. Dieter is going to be using uh, whatever abilities he can. He's going to TP home right now. And looks like the Phoenix is ready to go in here. I really think they need to initiate on the side of the Radiant. They can't let the Dyer do it on their terms. But uh, if it's a, a global right before... I guess he does have the Yule Scepter to prevent anything. There's the Windrun though. There's the ult. There's the Supernova. The stun is actually going to land on two of the cooldown. They're trying to focus the Supernova. It's actually going to land on four heroes though. Prop's going to get set up. Cody's going to get set up. Tangerine Ravish is on the back. He's going to go down. And that's going to be a full five-man wipe. Aeon Jim trying to get whatever he can. Is he going to be able to get the Gyrocopter? No. He's going to pop the Satanic and live. And that's going to be a five for nil wipe. The Witch Doctor sitting in the trees. He blinked out there before he died. But... That's not going to be enough here. and It looks like this game could be over now for AL. So it looked like they were ahead for so long. Trying to close it out as hard as they could here. They've only got two buybacks. Looks like they're just running down mid lane. N2K going to be pressuring bot tower now. Does have the ultimate as well as the Agnum Scepter. There's the buyback from... Uh, can they even do enough with the buyback from Tangerine Rabbit? Going to buyback. He's just going to blink away while the rest of his team shows up here. 
Looks like they do have the full data list, yes, on the gyrocopter there. So outputting quite a bit of damage himself. Zen Tuge, just going to push bot now. Roshan going to respawn in four minutes. That's Dieter, just going to pressure and kill this nether ward here. He's going to get life drain though, so he's got to be a little bit careful of that. The range is pretty ridiculous. Are you serious right now? No, okay, it's just broken now. Alright, so this is going to be pretty annoying to deal with. Hopefully this game will be over soon as the flak cannon is going to be used as well. Now they're just trying to go into Dieter. He's still got the BKB Satanic if he wants to use it. Still hasn't popped it just yet. There's the Shiva's Guard. Do they have the Egg? It looks like no. There's the Wish Doctor ulti though. But it's really not bouncing all that much. He's so poor right now. And it's really not doing too much damage. Paschetti is going to get Shallow Grave now. And he's just going to TP home. Is it going to be enough to keep him alive? I believe so. Dieter now. Just look at all the BKBs. Dieter's turning around and running. He's going to BKB up and just turn around. He's got the Satanic now. Just look at the damage. The life steal is going to be enough to keep him alive. Perhaps no. He should go down now. The cheese over here from Saf. And it looks like Uncle is going to be the next target. Does have the Shiva's Guard as well as the Ultimate if he wants to use it here. And it looks like there's the Shiva's going to be popped. Doesn't have the dive though. It is going to go down here. So maybe the game's not over just yet. We're approaching 53 minutes here and a lot longer than I had expected. N2K going to try to push up top and Gyrocopter with no buyback. He's down for about 87 seconds as it looks like the Dire, they're going to start pressuring the bot lane as well. So they only managed to lose the ranged racks, which is going to be pretty important here if the Dire can turn around and take the Radiance uh, both racks here. Means that really whatever they got is going to be pretty useless. And mid is uh, quite naked as well. So they do have the buyback on the Gyro now. The buyback as well on the Phoenix. And could this be where they make the mistake? Where is this leading? Oh, where, where the Gyro died, it's going to be nice and stuck there. There's the Phoenix. Has a nice little... Uh, all right, so it's pretty annoying. So it looks like uh, the Dire getting ready to rotate bot lane. Looks like they're actually thinking about going in with just three heroes here as the Mjolnir are going to be finished up by the Windrunner. Going to be jumping quite a bit with those lightning procs. Are going to find that Observer Ward with the Necrobook which is a nice little pick for them there. As there is a Sentry Ward top lane. And uh, they do actually have the Shadow Blade so they do see that Saf is invis here. And uh, actually wasting the Nether Blast there a little bit. Probably could have just used it on the barracks here. But nevertheless, it looks like they should have enough damage. There's the Necro Creeps. There's the Blink and the Shackle over here on the Saf. Is he going to go down? It looks like he will. They have no they have no heals there. It looks like Aeon Jib didn't pop the mech. He's just looking to hit the racks here. It looks like he's just trying to try to trade for the racks. But it's not going to be worth it, though. Trying to get healed up as much as possible. There's the Yule Step. You're going to be enough. He's going to be able to get the barracks. But not before he goes down. They at least have buyback on both heroes. Tangerine Rabbit, though. He's got no buyback. Just spent it. So he's down for 100 seconds almost. And... Now we've got two life chains over here on this gyrocopter. They do manage to get the racks. So if they if they can't turn around and win the game now, it's going to be very hard for WSS to continue on. It'll be pretty annoying there for a while. Phoenix is going to use the Shiva's Guard top lane. Let's have 3.7k here. Let's see what she wants to grab next. Perhaps an Aghanim Scepter, perhaps an Octarine Core. Could finally still look for something like an Atos. Could get a sheep stick of her own if she wants. Try to sheep up uh, really anybody. The silencer, the pugna. As it looks like the radiant's going for mid. And maybe they just want to look to end it with no pugna. For 50 seconds still. Dieter trying to flat cannon out whatever he can. There's the buyback from the silencer though. Still not turning around. They really need this bottom racks. They don't have a fortify and they know that. So they're just going to go aggressive. N2K. There's the shackle. She's going to get hexed up instantly though. There's the call down. There's the tombstone being thrown on as well. And Jim going to get figured. But it's absolutely no damage. There's a play from Capanese. He's going to turn on the death ward. It's jumping between so many heroes. Sass getting quite low though. He is going to get healed up though. Capanese is going to be the next target. And Jim's got to be careful. Problem's going to go down. They've still got no pug. Now the buyback from the Viper going to be coming in from the back now. And Jim taking so much damage. Still nobody targeting the racks. They know they can end it right here, right now. There's the buyback from the gyrocopter. He's got the boots to travel as well as the buyback over here from the witch doctor. Can't really do too much though. It looks like they're just going to end it. They've got no fortified. It looks like this game could be over. WSS. There's the triple sun. Capanese is going to go down. Sap's going to be the next target. And there's the ancient's going to fall. Beyond godlike for N2K. And what a game. WSS. It looked like they were out of it after that first Rax, but they're going to manage to turn it around and come back while Result Slingers are going to bring it to a Game 3. And what a fantastic Game 2 that was indeed. Windrunner going to end up being 14-6-14, doing a ton of work for her team. And 2 k going forward, AL is really going to have to pressure this mid lane. They know they can't give N2K all the space she wants, as she plays absolutely fantastic on that Windrunner. And 
what a game that was, guys. So please take a, a look at game one if you didn't get a chance to watch it. That was a really good game as well. Pretty back and forth, and we're going to be moving into game three, so check that out. If you want to stick around for uh, another couple seconds at the end of this video, there's just a little bit more about myself and my video series. So thanks again, guys, for watching. And uh, Saf, thanks for submitting this series. Really enjoyable so far, and I'm looking forward to the next game. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos. I have my series from Lane to Lane where I just cast some everyday pubs that you guys send me. I also do some more professional pubs like uh, games from Koikva, Miracle, whoever I can get my hands on from Dota Buff. I have a learning series as well, so feel free to check that out. There's some more info in the description as well as some videos linked in the annotations at the end here. Thanks a lot.